In this video, we're going to start to look at some examples of integrating improper integrals of the first type, where we have integrals over infinite intervals. So in this first example, I'm interested in finding the area under the curve y equals 1 over x um, for x greater than or equal to 1. So notice that that's going to be on the interval from 1 to infinity. So we have an application here finding the area. So let me just draw ourselves a graph here. We have the graph y equals 1 over x. And we're thinking about the area under this curve from 1 to infinity. So from 1 all the way to the right as far as we could, we can go. Um, so let's look at setting this up. So this area will be an integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x dx that I need to evaluate. And so right away I notice, of course, that this is improper when I write this down. Okay, because we do have that infinity in there. So the first step that I need to take is to write the integral using a limit. Okay, so as soon as you recognize that your integral is improper, the very first step that you need to take is to rewrite it um, using a limit, replacing that infinity here with some variable that you're going to approach. Um, in the definition, we were replacing um, infinity with t. Um, when you are working with your examples, you can continue to use t for infinity, or you can use some other um, letter that you prefer that's different from the variable um, that you're integrating with respect to. I tend to use um, b to replace an upper limit and a to replace a lower limit, but you can just pick whatever letter you like the best. I just find t's can start to look kind of like plus signs, so I prefer to use a different letter. So I'm going to rewrite this as a limit as b goes to infinity of an integral from 1 to b of 1 over x dx. And so now I can just do this part of the integral um, normally using rules and then plugging in my limits. But I need to keep my limit notation here in every step, so we want to be careful with our notation. We're using equal signs in each step. Of course, we have the dx's on our integrals. And now we also have this limit notation that we're bringing down. So my antiderivative of 1 over x is log of the absolute value of x. And I need to be evaluating that from 1 to b. So I have my limit here. b goes to infinity of log of b minus log of 1. Okay, Remember, log of 1 is equal to 0. So this is just saying to find the limit as b goes to infinity of log of the absolute value of b. Okay, so here let's think about our absolute value function, excuse me, our log function. So log looks like this. Okay, so we want to think about what's happening to a log function as b goes to infinity. Well, as uh, my x values in the log function would get bigger and bigger and bigger, so would the y values. So this is going off to infinity. Okay, so now we're ready to draw our final conclusion. Okay, so we did all this, this work using the, the definition of our improper integral, rewriting it as a limit and doing the evaluation. But having gotten infinity, we know that this means that the integral diverges. So we would say so the integral diverges. Remember we had two terms for what an improper integral could do based on what we would get for that limit. If we get a finite number it converges. If we get um, something that's not a finite number like infinity or if the limit doesn't exist then we have to say that the integral diverges. And in this case we also can interpret what this means for our area. So the area is infinite. Okay, so we have this area under the curve from 1 to infinity is infinite, and we will also conclude here specifically that the integral diverges. Okay, well you might think maybe it'll just always be infinity when I have an infinite interval. So we want to look at another example to see what else might happen. So we're going to take actually the same curve here, but now we're going to ask the question, about um, finding the volume of the solid generated when we take that region under the curve 
y equals 1 over x from 1 to infinity is rotated about the x-axis. So I've got my curve here, y equals 1 over x. Thinking about the area under the curve, or the region under the curve from 1 to infinity, but then rotating that region about the x-axis. So we're getting this sort of shape here that's going to get very, 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 very thin, but it's going to be infinitely long going off the page here. So I'm going to say, what's the volume of this object? So I'm going to set out my volume. Let's think about using the disk method here so we can keep things in terms of x. Okay, so I'm going to um, take my little slices perpendicular to that axis of rotation. We'll have an integral from 1 to infinity of pi times my radius, which is 1 over x squared dx. Okay, so I can see this is clearly improper since I have that infinity there. So I'm going to need to rewrite this as a limit. And I can pull the pi out in front if I wish, either in front of the um, integral or actually in front of the um, limit notation that I have there. So I can say that this is pi times the limit as b goes to infinity, of the integral from 1 to b, of 1 over x squared dx. Okay, so now I just need to worry about taking this um, integral here in terms of b and then evaluating the limit. So I've got the limit as b goes to infinity. My integral of 1 over x squared is negative 1 over x, and I'm evaluating that from 1 to b. Okay. Again, we're being careful about our notation here, keeping our limit notation at each step up until I actually take the limit. So I need to get my um, integral here evaluated. So from 1 to b, I have negative 1 over b minus negative 1 over 1. Okay, so now I think about what's the limit of this as b goes to infinity. Well, as b goes to infinity, 1 over b is going to be going to 0. So this is going to be going to 0. So I have something going to 0 plus 1. So this is going to be pi times 1, or pi. Okay. Well, since we came out with a finite number there for our improper integral, in our conclusion we would say, so the integral converges. And with improper integrals, you do always have to conclude whether it converges or diverges. And we can say, um, in this case, we were asked specifically about volume, the integral converges, and the volume is finite. Okay, specifically we found that the volume is equal to pi. Okay, so a couple things to think about here. We actually took the same region in both of these cases. In the first case, we talked about the area of this region. We said the, the area of this region was um, infinite. And then we took that region and we rotated it about the x-axis and we created this solid that has finite volume. So this is known as a, this particular solid here is called Gabriel's horn. Gabriel's horn was considered paradoxical because of having um, what turns out to be an object here with infinite surface area, okay, from taking that region that had infinite area and rotating it. So I have this object with infinite surface area, but finite volume, okay, and so how can we reconcile those ideas? Um, well, one way to, to think about this is to um, think about having a finite amount of Play-Doh, for example, um, that you roll out into a, a snake, into a really thin tube. And as you keep um, rolling that Play-Doh thinner and thinner and thinner, you're going to increase the surface area, but you're always going to have the same amount of Play-Doh to, to, that you had to begin with. So you can create this object that has um, an infinite surface area, sort of imagining that you could keep rolling it thinner and thinner and thinner and thinner. Um, but you could never add any Play-Doh to it. So you would keep that um, finite amount of volume while increasing the surface area. Um, so that's one way to kind of think about this particular object. So that's just a really cool um, sort of thing to think about here. But also shows us that we can have strange things that happen with infinity. You have these two different um, 
types of functions here on infinite intervals. We look at the improper integral, one comes out to be finite and one comes out to be infinite. Okay, and in particular for that certain type of function, um, we have an integral from one to infinity of one over x to some power p. Um, that integral will converge for values of p that are strictly greater than one and will diverge for values of p that are less than or equal to one. So we're not proving that in general for p, we, we actually looked at specifically the case where p equals one and showed that it diverges, and where p um, is equal to two and showed that that converges. But we do have this general rule um, that will be useful to know um, in some later examples.